Hello Matrix. Welcome to the third of our four pre-grade 12 sections of analytical geometry, equations of straight line graphs. I trust that you are gaining confidence as we cover these foundational concepts and ways of thinking. So having done formulae and inclination, graph concepts, we will now do equations of straight line graphs. We will increase our awareness of three different cases or possibilities of straight lines, similar to those discussed in the formula video. And then standard forms as well as non-standard forms of the equations of straight line graphs. Then only quadrilaterals remain. Our first case of straight line graph is the horizontal and vertical lines. What are their gradients? Horizontal lines have a gradient of 0, so m equals 0, and they have the equation y equals c, i.e. y equals a number. Note these horizontal lines below. Every point on this graph here has a y coordinate equal to 5. Therefore, the equation of this line is y equal to 5. And of this line, through minus 3, the equation is y equal to minus 3. And so the equation of the x-axis is y equals 0. y equals 5, y equals 0, and y equals minus 3 are the equations of these horizontal lines. And vertical lines. The gradient of vertical lines is undefined and they have the equation x equals k, i.e. x equals a number. Note these vertical lines below. Every point on this vertical line has an x-coordinate of 2, and therefore the equation is x equal to 2. Similarly, this vertical line has the equation x equals minus 4, and the y-axis has the equation x equals 0. These are the equations of the vertical lines. Remember, the equation of a graph is a condition which is true for every point on the graph. For case 2, lines through the origin, the y-intercept will always be 0. Therefore, c is equal to 0. In y equals mx plus c, that gives us the standard form of lines through the origin as y equals mx. To find the gradient of this line, we go up to find the vertical over the horizontal, giving us a gradient of 2 thirds, and therefore simply the equation of the line is y equals 2 thirds x. In case 3, other lines, when lines are not parallel to the axes or through the origin, we use y equals mx plus c or y minus y1 equal to m x minus x1. So, given a line with gradient 5, and going through the point 1, 6, we substitute m equals 5 and point 1, 6 in either y equals mx plus c or y minus y1 equal to m x minus x1. See these calculations to the end while we pause this video. So, what are standard forms? Well, there are two standard forms of the equation of a straight line. Classically, y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient, and c is the y-intercept, and y minus y1 equal to m, x minus x1, where m is the gradient, and x1, y1 is a fixed point on the line. But the variations are as important. Lines parallel to the x-axis, standard form y equals c. Lines through the origin, y equals mx. But then also, lines parallel to the y-axis, x equal to k. Vertical lines. And this is an equation which doesn't fit any standard form. Let's understand the form y minus y1 equal to mx minus x1. Given a fixed point, for example, 2, 3, on a line over there, then for any other point, x, y on the line, it is true that y minus 3 over x minus 2 would be equal to the gradient of the line. Simply multiplying by x minus 2, gives us y minus 3 equal to m x minus 2, which is actually 
this very equation. Then, if you know the gradient, you just can work out the equation by substituting for m. Now we realize that given a fixed point x1, y1, then for any general point on the line, it will be true that y minus y1 over x minus x1 equals the gradient, and that multiplying by that denominator would give us this form of the equation. Note that we use subscripts for fixed points and no subscripts for general points. Be open to this elegant alternative to y equals mx plus c. It is a much quicker method. Lastly, the general form of the equation of a line, ax plus by plus c equals zero. Pause to do worked example one, where we have such an equation. Pause to check your solution to worked example one. This equation, as we said, is in general form. There is no need to convert this equation to the standard form. Did you perhaps do so? We use the dual intercept method. To find the y-intercept, we simply put x equal to naught. To find y equal to minus 2. To find the x-intercept, we simply put y equal to naught. And we find x equals minus 3. The gradient is easily read off the graph as being equal to minus 2 thirds. By the way, the general form 2x plus 3y plus 6 equal to 0 converts to the standard form y equals minus 2 thirds x minus 2. Even though we didn't need to do that, it is interesting to confirm your sketch against this form 2 so that you grow in confidence no matter what the given form is of the graph that you need to draw. Pause to check your method. And now, non-standard forms of the equation in worked example 2 how about the dual intercept method? Pause to check your solutions. Again, it is not necessary to convert these equations into standard form. y equals mx plus c. The dual intercept method works perfectly. Again, to find the y-intercept, we put x equal to naught in both equations. And to find the x-intercept, we put y equal to naught. And this is true of both examples. To pause to check your method in these examples. Finding the equation of a line. There are three possible situations. Given m and c, given m and a point, or given two points. Pause to work through these examples, but remember to watch out for the three cases of lines and to apply what you've learned. Pause to check example one, Especially question 1.3. Did you recognize case 2? That a line through the origin has a standard form y equals mx and that you only needed to find the value of m, which was the tan of the angle of inclination of that line. The tan of 45 degrees is 1, so the equation was y equal to x. Maybe you'd like to pause to absorb once more. Pause to check worked example 2. Are you using both forms of the equation of the line? And your answer to 2.2. Notice that in this case, we have to have our line being perpendicular to line y equals 2x plus 5. Obviously, the gradient of that line is 2. And our line perpendicular to that will have a gradient of negative 1 over 2. In other words, negative a half. Pause to check example 3 and I encourage you to continue to try both forms of the equation, y equals mx plus c and y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. In question 3.2, did you notice that the x-coordinates of these two points were the same? No method was needed. You simply needed to draw a sketch. This is case 1, a vertical line. As you can see, the x-coordinates being the same means that those two points are directly beneath each other and that we have a case 1 line here. The equation is simply x equals minus 3, which we know, and the standard form is x equals k. y equals mx plus c just doesn't work in this example, and neither does the gradient formula work. Remember to always sketch the situation and think before being led blindly by formulae and rote methods. 
pause to absorb. Again, did you notice this time, though, that the Y coordinates were the same? And what does that mean? The Y coordinates being the same means that the line that we are looking at, the horizontal line, is the line Y equals minus 5 with standard form Y equals C. No method was needed. We simply needed to draw a sketch. Thank you for listening and working on a very important section. You would now have experienced the impact of a deep understanding of basic graph concepts in your thinking and will be an expert on straight line graphs. So, now there is one more pre-grade 12 video, quadrilaterals. Be inspired as you build a strong mathematical base. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.